Hello, everybody, and welcome back to this Tier 1 Championship game on Championship Sunday. My name is David Schwartzman. Along with me is Jacob Dower. Before we get started, I would like to give a big shout out to our Vice President, Justin Safier, who has retired at this point in his tenure at Max Live. We're going to talk a little bit more about it later, but right now we're going to head down to PA announcer Greg Fox, who will then hand it over to Rabbi Berman. Greg? Nobody from Brooklyn. Is there, is there anyone here from Los Angeles? <laughs> so let me let me try that again. Did you hear that? Is there anybody here from Brooklyn? Okay, you know, this is gonna be a tough competition. Let me just say uh, from Yeshiva University. We are thrilled to host this wonderful event, and it's especially fitting from coast to coast to have these wonderful schools represented in this great competition in the finals. And both of the names of these schools carries great significance. Mag and David. Who is the Magain David? Who is the shield of David? HaKadosh Baruch Hu Hashem. And who is the Shalhevet? What does the Shalhevet represent? The fire, the Esha Torah, representing the Shekhinah. Both Mag and David and Shalhevet reflect that we're part of one broader community who are working to serve Hashem. And that's what unites us. That's what links us. On the court, we're competitors. But in life, we are partners and friends, united in one community with one purpose. I wish each of you the best of luck. May the best team win. Have a great game. And Israeli national anthems.
Hello everybody and welcome back to the Maxstone Athletic Center. We're getting ready for opening lineups brought to you by NCSY Summer. I'll just go through the starting lineups now. Ze'ev Reamer, Zach Muller, Jeremy Ashigian, Ash Asher Dower, and Noah Rossi. That's for Shalhevet. And for Mag and David, Teddy Cohen, Albert Nasseri, uh, Ray Jajadi, Edmund um, Entebbe, and Michael Nacken. Jacob, what, what should we know heading into this game and who should we be looking out for as we're about to start? Well, let's start with the style of play of both of these teams. Seen a lot of them. Both teams are already winners of two games with the bye obviously on Thursday being the one and two seeds. We know the Mag and David Warriors, all they want to do is push the ball. They play hard defense. They locked up Judah Oppenheimer, number 31, for the Sting yesterday in a box and one. Got out, did not allow him to shoot the ball often. And they were running every time. Nasseri streaking down the court along with Natkin, Jajadi. These guys can finish in the paint. And I spoke to Coach Coleman for the Firehawks pregame, and he wants to stop that. He wants to slow them down, make them play in the half court. Do not allow them easy transition buckets as they have been scoring at ease throughout the tournament and especially force these guys to their offhand. We see Nasseri, number 23 for the Warriors. A prolific scorer, especially going to his left. Coach Coleman pleading his defense today to force him to his right hand, make him score with his offhand. We'll see what happens today. Looking forward to this one. And I spoke to Coach Dweck of Mag and David before the game, and I said, Coach, what do you do against this number one ranked shall have a team? And I kid you not, I've heard this now three times from three different coaches that have faced off against Shalhevet. And he said one word, and that one word is pray. He went on to describe that this is, some, this is a type of David and Goliath situation where they kind of feel immensely as the underdog, and it seems to be that that's what most teams have been playing as as well. Back to Shalhevet for a second. I was speaking to Coach Coleman before the game, and he mentioned to me that Jacob Benezra, one of their up-and-coming players, has actually been playing injured the entire tournament. He, he's had a terrible ankle. This was the first time he's practiced in a month and hit the court in a month, yet we've seen him hit liftoff. So this is just something remarkable we've seen from Jacob Ezra, and hopefully we'll be able to see just a little bit of what he's got this afternoon. Yeah, Ben Ezra, number four, the junior, his first year as a Firehawk, the transfer down from Seattle just last year, and I guess he's been playing with a hurt ankle. Not much higher he can go, maybe hitting the top of the backboard if he was healthy, but getting just high enough to throw it down. We saw the great alley hoop, almost a second one last game. Wouldn't be surprised if Shalhevet runs again, the famous back screen to the lob. We'll probably see that once or even twice tonight as both teams are getting pumped. Jim, maybe not as filled as we are accustomed to seeing here on a championship Monday, but Shalhevet drawing some enthusiasm from their crowd along with Magan. We know the long trip from Brooklyn. Pretty filled up, but our side, you can't see it on the camera. Pretty filled on the opposite side. Definitely some energy in this building. Both teams excited. Looking forward to getting underway. The clock reads eight minutes and period one. Zero's on the board. And in about an hour and a half, we will be crowning the 2019 Red Saracek Basketball Tournament Champion. Both teams ready to go. Asher Dower in to take against Albert Nasseri. Excuse me, it's back to Nasseri now, who takes up for Mag and David. Defense chance coming out of the crowd from Shalhevet. Teddy Cohen now with the ball for Mag and David. Se 10 seconds has gone, and Magan is trying to figure out what they're going to do to combat this Shalhevet Firehawks team. Albert Nasseri, the star of this Mag and David team, dishes it in, and the first two points have been scored. That's by Edmund and, and, um, and um, Antibi of Mag and David, and it'll be Firehawks ball, 7.31 left to play here in the first. Yeah, and we saw Magan right after the score, directly into their press. A close foul, maybe a little bit of a bailout for the Firehawks, they'll retain possession, but we saw early in that first Magan possession, forcing Nasseri to his right hand, almost a throwaway. Magan fortunate to retain the ball, ended up with a basket, but not bad defense by the Firehawks to start. Let's see what they do on offense. Reamer sends it over to Muller, back over to Reamer. Noah Rossi now, another transfer for the Shalhevet Firehawks team. Here goes Reamer, he's driving, he looks, he finds Muller from the corner. That's good! 
Give it to, give it to Muller. It's a 3-2 game, seven minutes left to play here in the first. Zach Muller, the big three. He's been waiting for that all tournament long. We know the shooter hasn't had that many fall yet. Today, one for one from behind the arc. 3-2 lead for the Firehawks. And to be sends it over to Nasiri. Nasiri looking over his options. Jajadi now has it for Mag and David and Cohen calling out his play. Antibi going up with it, and he's going to be called for the foul. 6.30 left to play, one point lead for Shalhevet. Yeah, and they're, they're going to get Muller on the foul, leaping over Antibi. Got him on the head, Antibi the line for two. Both teams looking pretty confident out of the gate. Both scoring on their first possession. As Antibi puts in the first one to tie it, 6.30 left. Magan looking to retake the lead. So one foul apiece for Shalhevet and Magan David. Magan David just last Sunday played Heschel here for the Shiva League Championship and lost in a nail biter at the last second, last sec 1.8 seconds to be exact. As that's taken back by Magan David, here comes Nakin. Nakin sends it to Antibi. Antibi goes up, and that's a 5 3 lead for Magan David. Yeah, Antibi, the great finish. All five points coming from the hand of number 13. A great start by the youngster, and we know he's a great defender as well. Shading Rossi, 30 feet from the rim, not letting him touch the ball. Reamer going in, puts it up. Nice move, but didn't go, quite go in, and here goes Magan David in transition. Chajadi goes up. And they're going to call the offensive foul. Nice play by Muller. And it's going to go the other way. Magan David still holds that 5-3 lead. Yeah, Jajadi, Jajadi can't believe it. But Muller planted his feet outside the restricted area. That's going to be a charge every time. Two-point game, 5.48 remaining in this first period. Reamer now has it for Shalhevet. 5.40 left to play here in the championship game's first quarter. Muller crosses it over to Reamer. Asher Dower now sends it back to Muller, and they're going to say that he stepped out. 5.29 left to play, 5-3 Magan. Yeah, some sloppy play out on the offensive end by the Firehawks. Coach Coleman can't be too pleased with his early offense. Telling his team in the huddle, yelling out, fake a pass to make a pass. We know the Warriors love to jump lanes. Must fake one in order to get the guys open. Teddy Cohen bringing up the ball for that Mag and David offense. And he's going to have to be the spark plug here to get things started. Nasiri, the star for Mag and David. Try sending it to Cohen, but to no avail. And here comes Jeremy Ashigian. Noah Rossi, beautiful pass down to Dower. And now it's a 5-5 game with five minutes left to play here in the first quarter. Rossi, a great play, draws a defender. Kicks it out to Asher, puts it in, 5-5, five to five. tie ball game. The Firehawks crowd is loud. Cohen for three, that's no good. Taken down by Muller. Muller lead, led the team in points and rebounds. Quite the feat during the regular season for this shall have at Firehawks team. They made it further in the CIF playoffs in the highest division than any Jewish school ever has. So this is some impressive Shalhevet team that Coach Coleman is putting on the court today. Yeah, in Los Angeles, they put you in a division based on how you played the previous year. The Firehawks have been very good the past four or five years. Moved all the way up to Division 3A. Went down a couple of rounds in. Great showing by them back in Los Angeles in the playoffs. Reamer tries going up, and Nasiri had something to say about that. And Dower sinks one, and it's back to a two-point lead for the Shalhevet Firehawks with 4.25 left to play here in the first. Defense chance coming out from the crowd at the Shalhevet side. Nakin over to Nasiri. And that's good from Antibi. We've seen a lot of him so far. 4.07 left to play, and Magan's keeping this one right where they want it to be. It's a tie game. Antibi. Cool, calm, and collected over there around the free throw line. A great shot, confident looking shot. He'll take that every time. Dower out to Muller, 4-3. No good, but Dower gets up, gets the garbage, but it's taken right back by Nasiri. Here comes Nasiri, he shades off Ashigian. Going up, he's denied, but fouled by Muller, and he's gonna head to the line for two. Yeah, if that is on Muller, that will in fact be his second foul, as it looks like it will be. 
We're going to have Jacob Ben Ezra, his first minutes, going to check in. But the Mag and David Warriors, another steal, a run out. We know defense ignites their offense. You can't allow them to move in transition. They did there, and Nasseri will find his way to the line. He is more than accustomed to shooting there as he plays hard, tries to take the ball to the hole each and every time. The Mag and David Warriors playing just like their namesake, the Golden State Warriors, dominant over these last couple of years, making it to the Shiva League Championship this year. Last year in Sarachak, they were in the, cons the Tier 1 Constellation game, as well as Yeshiva League champions just a year ago. So they've had quite the success as Nasiri misses his second. It's an 8-7 lead for Mag and David. 3.40 left to play here in the first. Muller, excuse me, Ashigian gets fouled. Yeah, that's going to be on the ground. And we see the Mag and David Warriors playing a triangle two. We saw them run into that a little bit yesterday. A little bit of box one, a little bit of triangle two. They have the two, they had them on Muller and Rossi. And now we see them playing Zev Reamer and Rossi on the triangle two as Ashagian puts in the three, keeps up the arm with the follow through, lead back to the Firehawks 10 to eight. Jeremy Ashagian giving this crowd something to root for. It's a 10 eight lead for Shalhevet. And here goes the Siri. it's almost taken away by Ashigian. As the three pointer hit, that was Antibi. And it's back to a one point lead for Mag and David, so they're not give, giving it, they're not making it easy for the Shalhabet Firehawks team. They're making them work for it. And to be on fire early on, another basket for number 13. He can't miss. Rossi sent it into a Shigian, but that wasn't good. And in transition, here's Teddy Cohen. Teddy Cohen with pressure on him, taken back. Now we're seeing Jacob Ben Ezra. I spoke to coach before the game, as I mentioned before. He's playing a little bit injured, so let's see what he can do. 245 left to play. It's 11 to 10 in favor of the Warriors. Yeah, and one thing Coach Coleman has to be happy with is the pace for this Firehawks team pushing the ball, drawing the fifth foul already on the Warriors. Just a little bit over five minutes into the game, already five team fouls, and we know seven will put the Firehawks at the line for one and one for the remainder of the half. Reamer, beautiful pass into Dower, but to no avail, and here goes Nasiri up with it and that's what he does best he's gonna head to the line to try to make it a three-point play on the right side his offside doesn't matter shields the defender puts it up with the left anyways and he's gonna go to the line for an and one the foul's gonna go on number 20 jacob pofsky the transfer actually his first couple games as a shall firehawk was not allowed to play over the year due to cif rules as a transfer his third game in shall jersey early foul though Going to put Mag and David up four points, their biggest lead early on. Nasiri sank his second, so Reamer brings it up for the Firehawks. 2.30 left to play here in the first quarter. Popsky now in for the Firehawks, and he has the ball. Beautiful move behind his back, but it didn't do much. Zev Reamer sends over to Ben Ezra. Ben Ezra, we've seen what he could do. Back to Reamer. Reamer, 4-3. No good, just short. And they're going to say that stays, shall have at ball. 2.08 left to play here in the first quarter. Yeah, good crash by the Firehawks. Off of Magan, going to result in an extra possession. As we see Magan David now in a box one, as we talked about, ran it yesterday. The box one on a Shagian. Popsky has it, goes up. No good, taken down by Antibi. Nasiri now brings it for Mag and David. Teddy Cohen calling out demands for what this offense should be doing. Mackin for three, just short. And now Dower brings it up for Shalhevet. We're under two minutes here in quarter one of the Tier 1 Championship. Taking that back now by Teddy Cohen. He's going to go up with it, just short. Nice play by Dower, and Popsky brings it back. We're going back in transition pretty fast now. Zaev Reamer back to Popsky. 124 left to play. Asher Dower sends it back to Reamer. Dower finds Ben Ezra, but it doesn't work. And now taken the other way by Antibi. And Antibi is going to get fouled. Yeah, and another turnover by this Firehawks team. Way too many early on if you're Coach Coleman. Going to result in a foul. Going to resulted in an out of bounds for the Warriors, only the fourth team foul on the Shell Firehawks. And we've, as I said, they looked 
cool and confident at the beginning of the game, not as much lately. Maybe some nerves settling in. They have to slow down, look for the easy pass. The Mag and David Warriors running a box one now, meaning the middle is wide open. Coach Coleman going to get number 10, Rossi. He runs the middle very well. Want to see them fake a couple passes, throw it in that middle, draw some defenders down low, maybe kick it to a guy streaking for an easy layup. 111 left to play. Mag and David to inbound. Gwindy now in for Mag and David. He'll, he has the ball. So is Braca. 105 left to play here in the first. Nasiri for Mag and David. Reamer on him. Under a minute left to play. She'll have it in a man to man straight up. Interesting set right now by the Warriors. Four all across the free throw line. Passing it around, trying to waste time. Let's see if they go two for one. Natkin has it for Magan. Goes up with it. They're going to call the charge, though. And it's going to go Shal Hevet's way. 41.8 seconds left. 14-10, Magan David. Talking about igniting your basketball team. No better way to do it than taking a charge. A great take by Ben Ezra, number four. Shal Hevet as adept to, as, to taking charges as any other team in this tournament. We see him multiple times a game. Going the other way for the Firehawks. 40 seconds left to play here in quarter one of Tier 1 Championship at the Red Star Trek Tournament 2019. Zev Reamer with the ball. Gives it over to Popsky. Popsky, again behind his back, loses, loses control of it, and here goes Nasiri in transition. Nasiri goes up, no good, taken back by Nakin, gets the own rebound. He goes up with it, and they'll call the foul. He'll head to the line for two. Great play by Nakin. Don't watch the ball on the fast break. Follow him. He did. Gets a rebound. Going to get fouled. Going to the line. He is always finding his way to the free throw line along with number three, 23, Nasseri. A great foul shooter in his own right. Going to go to the line for two. Try to extend this lead to six points with just 19 seconds remaining in this first period. Victor Braca joins that Mag and David's team on the court. Nacken sinks his first and extends it to a five-point lead. Yeah, we're going to see Antibi coming back in the game, as well as number 42, Zakai, probably coming in for the shooter, waiting for the second one. As shall have it, remains with the squad. They're going to bring in number one, Zach Muller. Already has two fouls, probably just for the final possession of this first period. Cannot pick up an offensive foul on this end. We know five fouls and you're out of the game. Have to play straight up on this possession. Ben Ezra into Rossi. Six-point lead for Mag and David as this first quarter winds down. Ten seconds left to go. There goes Reamer. Just misses, and it's given now. Mag and David has the ball. Here goes Braca. Puts it up. No good. We're going to head to a break when we come back. Quarter two of the Tier 1 Championship game. My story started with a letter in the mail. I took my first steps in New York and felt the energy all around me. I connected with my Rebbe on the first day of Sheer. My story was learning that the mitochondria is more than just the powerhouse of the cell. I made my painting from scratch, like really from scratch. My roommates came here from four different countries. We lit one menorah together. My story was practice every night. Chavruta every night. Subway rides. City lights. In my story, my name was in the headlines. The bylines. The University Museum. My story was my internship at the Supreme Court. Dancing with the Israeli flag in Times Square. My story was participating in the only hackathon, not on Shabbat. The Career Center found me my first job at a top business analytics firm. My story was becoming best friends with my Chavruta. And holding that NCAA trophy. My story started here. My story is just beginning. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Tier 1 Sarachek Championship game. It's the Mag and David Warriors up by six against the Shalhebet Firehawks. Jacob. What have we seen so far in this game? Well, I've had the privilege of calling each and every one of Mag and David's games in this tournament so far. And in my opinion, maybe their best quarter of basketball, maybe with the exception of the fourth quarter against the SAR Sting just yesterday, but they were out firing on all cylinders, defense leading to offense, exactly what Coach Dweck expects out of them. Steals on one end, easy layups on the other end. Shall have it looked a little bit careless out there with the basketball, but we know 
They get off to slow starts. Did so in their previous two games. Used to playing behind or even tied. Let's see what they do in the second period, trying to claw back. They're going to go with four out of their five starters, with the exception of the Shakian. In for Ben Ezra, as they look like they're going to run a three-on-three, -three, taking Muller and Rossi out of this game. Going to be a travel on Ben Ezra. I have not seen this too often. Mag and David in a triangle two. Coach Coleman taking Muller and Rossi, leaving them behind half court. Going to let the Shahabit Firehawks run a three-on-three -three on the offensive end. We'll see what he does next time. And so Mag and David has this type of swagger with a six-point lead here to start the second quarter. Teddy Cohen has the ball for Magan, sends it into Nakin. Back out to Nasseri. 4-3. No good, and it gets stuck between the rim and the backboard. 7.25 left to play here in the second, and Shalhevet's ball as they look to cut down at the six-point lead for Magan David. Yeah, it's Excuse me, it's not. It's, it's Magan David's ball. Jump ball, getting wedged between the rim and the basket. No jump balls at this level. Magan David ball. Nasser Cohen now, Teddy Cohen, has the ball for Mag and David. Albert Nasseri has the ball for Mag and David. Jajadi now. Albert Nasseri goes up with it. And that's a foul called. Yeah, that's going to be on number 23, Nasseri. And to be holding his hand up, but the foul's not on him. That's the second on Nasseri. Can't believe it. Excuse me, the third foul on Nasseri might be done for the half. A big blow to this Warriors team. And going to send Rossi to the line for a one and one Coach Dweck cannot be happy with a foul 90 feet from the rim. Going to allow Shalhevet to maybe cut this to a four-point deficit with the clock stopped. So this may be the turning point in this game now that Nasseri is out. But Rossi nonetheless heads to the line and will try to cut this lead down. And he misses that shot. So 6.50 left to play. It's still a Mag and David six point lead. There goes Antibi. 4 3. That's way off. And Reamer brings it down. And they're going to call the charging foul on Zev Reamer. Fans not happy about that one. But nonetheless, it's going to be Mag and David ball with 6.39 left to play here in the half. Yeah, Reamer can't believe it. But look like. That was Cohen, beat him to the spot, took the charge, a great take by Cohen, igniting his team, up six, trying to extend this lead to eight or even nine early in the second period. Nakin has the ball for Mag and David. 6.28 left to play. Nakin trying to play around with Dower, puts it up, and he's fouled on the shot, and he'll head to line for two, trying to make this an eight-point lead. Nakin, a great up fake, gets Dower in the air. Draws the contact, gonna go to the line for two. Nakin has been there more than once today. A chance to extend it to an eight point game. Just an unbelievable start by this Warriors team. Exactly what Coach Dweck wants. Michael Nakin has been a noteworthy player for this Mag and David team. I spoke to Coach Dweck before the game. He said Michael Nakin is one of the key contributors and somebody he's, that's heavily relied upon for this Mag and David team, and he gave, gives this team an eight-point lead. 6-18 left to play here in the half. Zev Reamer now for Shalhevet. He's been leading this offense so far this tournament. Asher Dower to Ben Ezra. Sends it down to Rossi. Rossi puts it up. No good. Taken back by Antibi. Sent down to Nakin. Driving now. It's fed in fast transition, but it's taken back by Shalhevet and taken back again by Magna David. It's a little sloppy, taken back again by Muller. A lot of back-to-backs there. Muller goes up and a beautiful move. And it's gonna be an injury on the floor. But Mag and David leads by six, 18 to 12, with 548 left to play. Some sloppy basketball ends up in a two for Shalhevet. Muller jumps the passing lane, takes it in strong. A great wall up by Bijou, but Muller just too big, too strong, too athletic. Goes right over the teeth of the defense. Two points for the Firehawks, a six point game, 548 remaining in the second period. As we're gonna get Braca, number zero, the defensive specialist, back in for the Warriors. It's been quite the tournament here and quite the max live coverage. We'd like to thank Yeshiva University, NCSY Summer, Camp Step It Up, LK Healthcare Data Plumbers, Clipped Keepa, Lenny's Pizza Miami Beach, Double Tree by Hilton, and Lake Como Pizza. Here goes Cohen. He has the ball now. 
And they're going to call. I'm not sure what they called there. Yeah, it's going to be a foul. They're going to call it on the side, but the eighth foul on the Firehawks is going to lead to a one and one Coach Andrew Schultz, the assistant coach, pleading for his team to play with their hands up, resulting in a foul. Going to send Jajai to the line for a one and one Let's see what he does. And that's good. So Ray Jajadi puts MDY back up by seven. 537 left to play here in quarter number two. Jajadi, an unbelievable free throw shooting team. Killer, especially down the stretch, making each and every point count at the line. A big, big skill for a basketball team. Here goes Dower driving, puts it up, but that's no good. And they'll call the foul. That's going to be on Jajadi. So it's an eight-point lead for Mag and David. 5.29 left to play. And Dower heads to the line for shots. Yeah, as we spoke about, both teams in the bonus early on have to move their feet, cannot play with their hands. Both teams going to shoot for the remainder of the half. Let's see what Dower does with the one and one at the line. Dower sinks his first, so it's cut to a seven-point lead. Shalhevet hasn't seen a lead, I believe, since it was about five to four yeah, in the first. Not so much bench play by the Firehawks early on. Only seven players to see the court. Big rebound there by Ben Ezra, but Muller couldn't corral it. They're going to say it went off Mag and David. Didn't look like it from here. We had a clear angle to that ball, and it looked like it was off of Shalhevet and Muller's hands, and they're going to rule that way. Yeah, great job by the officials talking about it. Getting the call correct. That's all you can ask for as Zoggy, Joseph Zoggy, number 44, the senior, going to check in the game for number four, Jacob Ben Ezra. Shall have it back in a man-to-man. -man. You do not see a lot of zone out of these Firehawks. Strong man-to-man -man defense. They're going to give Cohen the shot. We were playing way off of him. There goes Nacken. Oh, and just in and out. Here goes Reamer. Reamer puts it up. He falls, it's no good. Put up again by Muller, and Dower picks up the mess. Asher Dower brings this game with him five for Shalhevet. 5.03 left to play until the half. Yeah, Reamer shaking up, but he'll be all right. A couple chances for the Firehawks. Lead to the two on the tip-in. Mag and David has to do a better job at boxing out. Cannot keep giving these Firehawks second chance points. Now the Firehawks only down five. Still 5.03 left in the second period. A ton of time left. Shall have it on a little run. Let's see what they could do right now. Maybe get a stop, cut it to three or two on the other end. I usually get a lot of flack for calling quarters periods, but as long as a former ball player will call it a period, I'm more than okay with it. Here goes Antibi. Nacken gives it back to Antibi. Antibi puts it up. That's good. Clutch floater there from Antibi, and now it's back to a seven point lead for the Warriors. Antibi is absolutely en fuego out here. Another basket for number 13. As some stifling defense, gonna be off Magan. Magan back in their press, a full court man, and now it looks like they're gonna line up in a straight man to man. The Magan David Warriors keep on switching their defense, and it's been working so far, holding the Firehawks only 15 points midway through the second period. Be sure to stay tuned for the Camp Step Up Halftime Show. We'll be joined by Vice President Josh Joseph as well as Yoni Cohen and a special tribute to some of our Max Live staff that will be leaving us at the end of this tournament. Yeah, sloppy pass by the Warriors. Shall have it gonna go down the other way. See what defense they line up in again. Muller and Rossi gonna stay out. A triangle two back. Coleman telling his team to run three on three. You rarely see this. Exciting basketball, a game of chess between the two coaches. We'll see what results. And Dower puts it up, no good. Taken back by Zagi. Here goes Dower again. Puts it up, no good again, but it's taken back by Ashigian. Now in comes the fourth guy for Shall have it, but there, he now he'll move back, so it's back to that three on three. Here goes Ashigian, no good. Brought down by Anthony, but taken back by Dower. Dower puts it up, strength. And he gives them two points, so it's back to a five-point deficit for the Firehawks. And that's what's going to happen if Coach Schweck decides to stay in this triangle, too. 
a lack of rebounding out there. Just three guys on each side. She'll have it getting five opportunities at the rim. Your chances are high when you get that many cracks at it, and they make it count. 22 to 17, just a five-point game. Here goes Cohen for the Warriors. Antibi puts it up just a little bit too hard. And here comes Rossi back in transition. Gets around a couple of Magan players. Here goes Zog. It goes up, and he'll be fouled by Nekin. Zoggy heads to the line for two. Yeah, Nakin not happy with the call, but Zoggy, the senior, going to get a shot at the line to make it a three-point game. Shalhevet has been down basically the entire game. Went down as many as eight points early in the second quarter. An opportunity right now to cut it to three. Coach Coleman would love a lead going into halftime, or at least... A within three-point deficit, we'll see what Zoggy does at the line right now. Well, shout out to Coach Schwartzberg of Valley Tory sitting right in front of us. He was in this position just one year ago against Shalhevet, although Shalhevet did prevail. Yeah, great game. Speaking of Schwartzberg, a shout out to Rabbi Ari Schwartzberg. Great teacher, dean of students back at Shalhevet High School. I know he's watching. Shout out to Rabbi. There sure should be a lot of shout outs to go around, but we'll hopefully get to that later. Teddy Cohen bringing up the ball for Magan. They're up by five on the Shalhevet Firehawks. Teddy Cohen. Teddy Cohen, they're gonna call him a couple, too, couple steps too many. And with 2.52 left to play, it'll be Shalhevet ball as they look to cut into this five point deficit. All right, and we're gonna see now Coach Dweck gonna go back into the triangle too. So we'll see what happens with Reamer and Rossi. They're gonna be a triangle, excuse me, a box one now they're gonna go with. Ashagian gives it back to Reamer. 2.40 left to play. Here goes Noah Rossi, the recent transfer. Asher Dower sends it down to Ashagian. Ashagian goes up, that's good. And it's a three-point lead now for Magan as Shalhevet's looking to come back in this one. Yeah, the Warriors wanted to travel. Not going to get it. Ashagian, the easy two in the paint. Just a three-point game. This Firehawks crowd is alive right now, pleading for their team to make a defensive stop. It seems like they're finding their swagger here. But in response, there's Nakin. Nakin, the veteran, just so smooth from that short corner. He'll hit that more often than not. Got to jump out at him. The easy two for Nakin. Here goes Ashagian, but Dower picks up the rebound, and it's back to a three-point lead. So an exciting time here in the Tier 1 championship. 150 left to play. Yeah, they might give him a missed field goal on that one. I'll give him the assist for the alley-oop. A great play by Ashagian. Great follow by Dower. Easy two, three-point game. Jajadi now. Cohen for three. Yes! Teddy Cohen. 27-21 lead now for Magan David. 130 left to play here in the second. This game is heating up right now. Some lackluster offense on both sides. That is over. 27-21. Both teams exchanging blows out here. A six-point game for the Warriors. Jeremy Ashagian gives it over to Asher Dower. Sends it all the way across to Rossi. Puts it up. No good. Taken down by Braca. Now in transition fast is Magan David. Cohen back to Nacken. And it's no good, taken back now by Magan, by, taken back, back now by Shalhevet. Here goes Zev Reamer. Reamer to Dower. Finding Rossi in the corner. Here goes Ashagian back to Dower. Ashagian driving, sends it all the way across to Reamer. Reamer trying to find Zagi, but he couldn't. Here goes Ashagian. At the top of three is Ashagian giving it back to Reamer. 38 seconds left to go here in this first half of the Tier 1 Championship at the Red Sirotrek Tournament. Zev Reamer driving, puts it up, no good, taken out by Braca. He puts it up a little bit too early. He didn't know how much time was left on the clock. They were counting down and he thought that that was the actual game clock, but he, they were counting down the shot clock. So 26.2 seconds left. Yeah, you hate to see that. Braca didn't know the time, got a little bit confused, throws it away. But the Mag and David Warriors, probably the best defensive team in this entire tournament, jumping at each and every Firehawks pass, not giving them any room to breathe. A great defensive stand. The miscue going to put Shell Heaven right back on offense, going to hold for one, just 10 seconds left in this period. Zev Reamer, 10 seconds left. I'll let the play talk for itself. Five seconds. 
Reamer driving, puts it up, blocked by Nagin. And Magan David heads to the half with a six point lead. When we return, we'll have Josh Joseph. Excuse me, we're getting the interview right now. So Yoni Sunshine will bring us an interview with Coach Dweck. Yoni? Coach Dweck, you've been telling your team a lot. It's all about heart. Hashem gave you a heart. Hashem gave you a brain. You got to use it. What's the plan for the second half to win this game? Hashem and heart. And pray. We're going to pray right now. Thank you, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Thank you, Yoni. Sounds like the Mag and David Warriors will dive in a quick mincha in the halftime locker room. And we'll be back after the short commercial break with the Step It Up halftime show. Please stay tuned. Step It Up is not your typical basketball camp. As a founder and camp director, I take great pride that over the last five years, we've produced athletes that are now playing in college, athletes that are now playing overseas in professional leagues. Our sleepaway camp is located at Colby Sawyer College in New Hampshire, rolling greens overlooking the mountains. At Step It Up, as we're unconventional, we are not scared to push our players. We take your minds and bodies to places you never imagined going. We produce unbelievable results. You will get better here. You will get better as a person. You will get better as a player. That's the Step It Up way. As much as Step It Up is an intense basketball training camp, and it is, we have a great off-the-court curriculum design. Your sons can be involved in everything from SAT prep, reading, math, and English tutoring. If he has a bar mitzvah coming up in the fall or winter, we have bar mitzvah lessons with our camp rabbi. We have more speed training, pool workouts, football, soccer, ping pong. It's a great balance between our intense on-the-court curriculum that they get a couple hours each day to relax. For me, having just finished a four-year college basketball career and looking to expand my career overseas as a professional basketball player, the Step It Up environment is absolutely perfect. At Step It Up, we demand excellence and we are very hard on each and every camper. We give each and every camper special attention because they need it and we know they need it in order to grow. We all have the same goal. We all want to help these kids succeed. What happens here is magic. You want to be a part of this. When we train, we are second to none. Step It Up was founded on the premise that the game is overplayed and undertaught. It is a skill development basketball camp for the serious athlete who's ready to devote a summer to transforming his game. When I designed this camp, my vision and my dream was to attract serious basketball players from all over the world. You're welcome here, we will develop you. Welcome to Max Live. This is the Camp Step Up Halftime Show. I'm joined by Senior Vice President Josh Joseph and Deputy to the Senior Vice President Yoni Cohen. So we'll start with the, vice, the, the Senior Vice President Josh Joseph. Josh, what does this tournament mean for the university in general? So first of all, what it means is that I get to hang out with you guys. 
and spend some time with some of our incredible students because what Yeshiva University is first and foremost about is providing unique experiences for our students and what's more unique they're getting to be part of Max Live, the incredible job you guys do all season long now with our YU Max, the only Skyline Conference team that has play-by-play -play at every game. Uh, what you guys did this year in incredible circumstances for the last couple of years, watching every second of every minute of every game. It's exciting, it's electric in here. There's an, it's an unparalleled, unique experience that you guys get, and we all benefit from you. Something like 27,000 people watched and listened to you during the finals, during the championship. So the first thing it's about is about you guys, and we thank you and the whole team. You back there, too. Thank you for the compliments. A reminder, we're here for you all season long with the YU Maccabees. Now, Yoni, let me ask you, what have you seen out here over the course of the tournament so far? Maybe a prediction for the end of this game. Tell me a little bit about this tournament. Wow, uh, this, this tournament has been amazing. I actually have been here for basically every game. Um, and the play has just been top level, really has been top level. Um, all, every team from every city, every yeshiva that's represented here really played their hearts out. Uh, my nephew, who's down from Katz in Boca, David Zach, shout out to you, uh, did, uh, did every, like every team, did an excellent, excellent job in participating. Shabbos at the hotel with all the teams was amazing. What a great camaraderie between all the teams. The tournament is, gets better and better every year, and now with the Max really playing at an elite level also, and then being at the hotel, it really has taken athletics at YU to a completely different level, uh, and thanks to senior vice president over here next to me uh, really as in, we're investing in our in our athletics um, you know and every aspect of the athletics and in max live which I know Josh you really spoke really well on uh, the max live team but this is a completely student run team Yeshiva University has like barely and nothing to do with the success that these guys do and they do a tremendous tremendous uh, job throughout the season with the max and now with Sarachek really looking forward to the second half and a uh, great tournament all around. When we return, we'll continue the Camp Step It Up halftime show and we'll get the second half of this Tier 1 championship. We'll be back after this. As much as Step It Up is an intense basketball training camp, and it is, we have a great off-the-court curriculum designed. From everyday electives, we have a think, work, and chill approach. Every day from 2 to 4 p.m., your sons can be involved in everything from SAT prep, ACT prep, reading, math, and English tutoring. If he has a bar mitzvah coming up in the fall or winter, we have bar mitzvah lessons with our camp rabbi. That's the think approach. If he wants to work, we have basketball private training, we have more speed training, pool workouts, maybe tennis, maybe golf off campus, football, soccer, baseball. If he wants to chill, hammocks, ping pong, pool, read a book, think, work, and chill. Welcome back to the Camp Step It Up Halftime Show. Camp Step It Up is a sleepaway camp for basketball players located on the beautiful campus of the College of New Jersey. Just 90 minutes away from New York, New Jersey area and just 60 minutes away from the Teaneck, Englewood and Deal, New Jersey. Step It Up is proud to host hundreds of 4th through 12th graders almost, from almost every single Yeshiva League school as well as Jewish day schools all around the country. For more information, log on to timetostepitup.com. Jacob, what have we seen so far in this half and have you been surprised by any of the outcome? I am really, really pleased with this Mag and David Warriors performance in the first half. They are playing their hearts out. They have fully recovered from the tough loss just last Sunday to the Heschel Heat. We know in the championship game of the Yeshiva League, in this exact gym, a heartbreaking loss, up two points with one second remaining, the Heschel Heat, an and one to take the lead and win the game. But they are back, they are playing with vengeance, and they are poised to win this game on the other side for the Shalhevet Firehawks, have not played their best game, yet find themselves only down six points. They have not played well, but Coach Coleman 
cannot be too upset with the deficit. We know, we've seen them throughout this tournament. They could come back in the blink of an eye. I'm really curious to see how this third period begins. Talk about it every game. The great Phil Jackson always says, whoever starts the third quarter likely wins the basketball game. Fans still coming back to their seats, but teams have to draw their own energy. The game will go on. A six point game, a great game. Looking for this game to come down for the wire, to the wire. I am excited. How about you, David? I'm very, very excited, and what brings me some of this excitement, actually it doesn't bring me some excitement, it takes away some of my excitement. I, I have to make sure that I have to make sure that I give the proper shout outs to some people that deserve that deserve some acknowledgement, particularly our Vice President Justin Safier, who will be leaving us at the end of the year or at the end of the day, as well as Natan Sereni, a proud member of Max Live through his YU tenure, and the Zerman twins who were not able to join us so far this tournament and for the entirety of the tournament, but Yoshua and Binyamin, it's been a pleasure working with you guys over these, this past year, and we hope you all the success in the future. There goes Muller, up with it, trying to get Shalhevet started early, but doesn't get it done. He has the ball once again for Shalhevet. Yeah, the Warriors in a box in one. Number 13, and to be probably the best defender, Shading Muller. The other guy's in a box. They're going to send Dower, number 33, to the high post. Want to see them try to feed it to him early on. Get the defenders moving. Kick out to open shooters. As we're going to get an off-ball foul. That's Antibi shading Zach Muller a little bit too aggressive. Going to draw the first one on the Warriors just 30 seconds into the second period. Muller inbounds for Shalhevet. Noah Rossi with the ball. Zach Muller has the ball for Shalhevet. He's the points and rebounds leader for the Shalhevet team during their regular season run. Noah Rossi sends it all the way across to Ashagian in the corner. Ashagian sends it down to Dower. Back to Ashagian in the corner. 4-3. Yes! Ashagian, another three ball, his second of the game. Leaves up the arm with the follow through. Has this Shalhevet crowd into the game. Cuts the deficit in half to three. One minute into the second period. Teddy Cohen over to Antibi. Nakin, 4-3 to respond. Ooh, just short. But there goes Antibi to clean up the mess. Antibi, too skilled, too smooth. Puts it around the defender. A scoop layup brings it back to five as Reamer for three. Save! Reamer puts it in from the corner. The three-point balls are now falling for the Firehawks. Just a two-point game. 130 into the second, 130 into the second half. And this looks to be an exciting one. We've seen shot for shot. So the Antibi has the ball for Megan David, who wants to respond. And they're gonna call a foul on Nakin. An offensive foul gives the ball to Shal Hevet with 6.18 left to play, down by two. Nakin extending the elbow. That's gonna draw the whistle more often than not. An offensive foul, the third on Nakin. Not a team foul, but Shal Hevet only down two with the ball. Could tie it or even take the lead for their first time since early in the first quarter. Muller puts it up. No good. And it's taken by Nasiri, who plummets right into the scorer's table in front of one of my dear colleagues, someone who's helped us out all season, Stan, who is retiring after the conclusion of this season. So a big shout out to Stan, who's done so much for this university over the past, I, I believe, a couple of decades. Stan, a legend here at Yeshiva University, running intramurals as well. 43 years on campus. Of course, have to respect him. Shout out, Stan leaving at the end of the year. Thank you for your time here, Stan. And so Mag and David tries to respond. Their lead has gotten cut down to two. Taken by Nakin. 5.40 left to play here in quarter number three. Nasseri has the ball for Magan. Ashagian trying to shade him. There goes Jujati, 4-3. That's off that cumbersome side white pole. Players hate to see it. Uh, defensive teams love to see it. Yep. Got to play around it. Already the third game in the building. Their fourth. Going back to last week's Yeshiva League. And some of these guys played here last year. The White Rafter is always a factor. Got them there in the corner. Out of bounds. She'll have it the other way. Again, these teams no strangers to this gym. As there goes Noah Rossi tying up the score for Shal Hevet. That's Rossi. They call him Saucy Rossi. The finger roll. Knifes into the paint. Ties this game up for Shal Hevet. The fans are going wild. 
Nacken. Back to Cohen. 4.55 left to play. Here's Cohen. Back to Antibi. Antibi puts it up. That's good. It seems like whenever the shot have it, Firehawks make a big play. Antibi's right there to quiet the crowd. Antibi, a great floater. Two points. And we're going to get an offensive foul on the Firehawks. If that's on Muller, that could be his third or his fourth, but they're going to get Reamer number two. The handoff, you cannot move while you're handing off the ball. That'll be an illegal screen every time. Going the other way, a great call by the referees. The second foul on Reamer. And boy, has Edmund Antibi been big for this Mag and David team. Coming up huge in this Tier 1 championship of Saracek Monday. Albert Nasseri gives it to Nacken. Nacken, 4-3. Yes! Michael Na Nacken! Number 44, Nacken, cold-blooded. We saw what he could do. Two huge games and a huge three-pointer. Brings it back up to five. The Mag and David Warriors back in control. And that ball is going to be off Shal Hevet. So it's Mag and David ball. They're up by five, and they look to extend it. Boy, Jake, it's been a, it's been quite the first couple minutes of this quarter. But who who would you say has the edge right now? I don't know the Shal Hevet Firehawks. We saw them down six, tied this game up. But Mag and David, they looked like they were lost. Could have squandered the lead. Right back, five straight points. A chance to extend it to seven or even eight. Love to see the response by this Warriors team early on. Jajadi gives it to Nacken. Nacken with Dower on him. Nasseri puts it up, but that's no good. And Albert Nasseri still trying to find his stride here. And if he can get going, who knows what this Magan team can do. There goes Reamer. 4-3. Yes! Zev Reamer. Another one. His second three bomb of the period. He's alive. We talked about Muller has been cold throughout the tournament. He's in a big three. Reamer cold as well, but we know he is lights out from behind the arc. He's second early on in the second half as Natkin, the answer, the alley-oop, a little Jacob and Ezra action, gets the two. And they're going to call the foul on Antibi. Actually, they're going to double him up. So they're going to say Antibi... And we're going to wait for confirmation on this, Jacob. Did you see who they called there from Shalhevet? It looks like it was going to be on a Shagian. Some extracurricular activity under the hoop. The refs trying to take control of this game. Do not want it getting out of hand. We'll have double techs. Probably no free throws except for Zach Muller going to the line. But we know one more either way will send either Antibi or Shagian out of this game. They have to be careful going forwards as Ben Ezra will come into the game. I would presume for number 14 is Shagian. Coach Coleman does not want his players getting out of hand, but we're all good now. Double text. Muller going to go to the line. It's a 36-32 lead for Mag and David, the number two ranked team in the tournament, looking to upset the number one shall have at Firehawks. Boy, I don't think a lot of people saw this one coming. Even Coach Dweck, who said this is a David and Goliath type of situation between these two teams. Coach Coleman, who I spoke to before the game, he believes that what's attributable to this success that this shall have a team has seen over the last couple of years is just a commitment through all years of high school from freshman year to senior year and being able to work with players all the way through their senior tenures. Yeah, shall have it. Unlike many teams out east, not afraid to place guys on the varsity basketball team throughout their shall have a career. Zev Reamer, just a sophomore. We know he's a vital part of the shall have it Firehawks basketball team. Played big minutes last year, playing big minutes this year. A lot of juniors getting minutes, some sophomores as well. We have contributing factors from each of the grades. We know a lot of people listening, some shall have it alum. Want to give a shout out to good friends, the Gill brothers, Mike and Jonah, watching from around. 21st birthday, happy birthday to them. I'm sure everyone watching back at home, the whole school. And we know Mag and David Warriors fans as well. Not all of them can make it out of here, but we know they're watching back in Brooklyn. Good luck to both these teams. Just a four-point game as Zach Miller tries to cut it to three. 
And this Mag and David team, just going back to what we were speaking to about before, not strangers to sophomores being on the team. Albert Nasseri, last year playing as a sophomore. So we've seen on both squads, sophomores coming in and playing big moments. Neck in. Down to Antibid, stuffed by Benezra. We haven't seen much of him so far, but contributing there. Nacken has it, 2.45 left to play. Cohen, back to Nasseri. 2.40. Here goes Jajati. Back up to Nacken. Nacken dishes to Cohen. And they're going to call the foul on Reamer. Yeah, and we saw in the previous game a loose ball foul during a three resulted in the three points counting, but here the blocking foul before the pass off. Play stops, gonna go out of bounds for the Warriors, up three, four fouls each way. Just two more to give for either team. Both teams in foul trouble early again. Fouls could play a huge factor down the stretch. We know the Warriors a great foul shooting team. Nacken just misses that three. And now shall have it in transition. Here goes Zach Muller. Muller driving, puts it up. Oh, and just misses, but Dower ends to clean up the mess. Back out to Muller. Muller dishes it down, but that's no good and taken back by Nacken. These teams finding their steps now. There goes Nasiri, loses the handles on that. Muller is now down to Dower. Dower alone with Nacken. And Tebby sends it right back in to Jajati, who throws it all the way down, but Teddy Cohen couldn't corral it. Yeah. And with 1.55 left to play in this third quarter, it's 36-33 in favor of Magan. Coach Coleman pleading for this Firehawks team to settle down. We saw a series like that earlier in this game, leading in a Zach Muller basket. Now a harmless out of bounds, going to give the ball back to the Firehawks as Muller nice into the paint. Muller, stunning move, doesn't surprise me at all, but he puts two in for Shalhevet. And makes the one point lead for Mag and David. 140 left to play here in the third quarter. Defense chance coming out from the Shell Hevet Faithful. They've made their way here all the way from the West Coast. And to be back to Cohen. 130 left to play. Nasseri for three. Oh, just too hard. Too much on that one. And now Shell Heaven in transition. Here's Noah Rossi. Rossi goes up. Beautiful move. That's good. And Shalhevin has their first lead since the th first quarter. It's 37-36 Shalhevin with 1.18 left to play here in the third quarter. The Firehawks with the response. Coach Dweck has seen enough. Going to the timeout. Zach Muller, the acrobatic finish just two possessions ago, giving us shades of his championship performance, his MVP performance from last year. And Saucy Rossi back in the paint. The easy two shall have it their first lead since 5-4 early in this ball game. They are back in business, up one. Looking forward to seeing how this game plays out. Great game by both teams as we near the end of the third period. So this one's a beautiful and exciting tier one final. Nothing short of exciting. 37-36 in favor of the Firehawks. 118 left to play as Mag and David and Shalhevet both looking to make themselves champions of this Sarachek tournament. Yeah, and we keep speaking about it. I'm really interested to see how free throws play a factor coming down the stretch. Both teams in foul trouble. Two of the best free throw shooting teams in this tournament. Mag and David rarely misses from the stripe. Shall have it a good free throw shooting team in their own right. This game could come down to shots at the line if it stays close. So with 1.18 left to play, Shall have it has a one point lead. Teddy Cohen brings it up for the Warriors. Michael Nacken, who's hit a couple of key shots, has the ball for Magan. One minute left to play, and Ray Jajati is trying to figure out what the Warriors will do to get themselves back in the lead in this Tier 1 final. Michael Nacken, under a minute left. Reamer taking him tight. Goes up. Oh, and just short. And now here goes Shall have it. Muller. With N on Nacken, puts it up. Just, just short, back up by Reamer, and that's good. And it's now a three-point lead, biggest lead of the night for the Shalhevet Firehawks with 30 seconds left to go here in the third quarter. The Firehawks absolutely pounding the offensive glass. Looks like they have second and third opportunities almost each and every time down the floor, leading to another putback layup. A three-point game, biggest lead of the night for the Firehawks. The crowd is going wild. 
as the Warriors hold for one. 10 seconds left in this third quarter. Michael Nacken, eight seconds left. Nasseri with the ball in his hands and he's gonna get the final idea. There goes Cohen. Ball put up for three, no good. Would have counted if it was in, but Anthony couldn't get it to go. We're gonna head to a quick break, but when we return, it's quarter four of the tier one final. It's an awesome ball movement, and there's a steal by Simba Halbert. Simba Halbert taking it in, spin move, lefty layup, up and in. Al Jones, Halbert, Halbert for three, oh! Simba Halbert! Halbert thinks about the three, a step back to three, what is? Wow! It's a top, Simba Halbert, corner three, it's good! Simba Halbert with the fist bump! Halbert now has a tough shot, picks it in! Simba Halbert! Hello everybody and welcome back to the 2019 Red Saracek Tournament Championship game between the Mag and David Warriors and the Shell Heaven Firehawks. The Firehawks find themselves on top by three with eight minutes left in this contest and within the next couple of minutes, hour or so, we should have, not about an hour, a lot less than that, hopefully. I wouldn't be upset if it goes to overtime, but we should have a champion of 2019 Saracek and it's been a fun one thus far. Yeah, the Firehawks. Down six at the break. Came back with vengeance in 18 to nine. Third quarter advantage for this Firehawks team. Back up three points. Really excited for this fourth and final period. Let's go. Jajadi now gives it over to Antibi. Teddy Cohen for the Warriors. 7.48 left to go in this final quarter of the tier one championship. Nacken, Cohen for three. Yes! There goes Teddy Cohen. Ties the game up at 39 with 7.30 left to play here in the fourth quarter. Teddy Cohen, the huge three, and immediately locks up Muller. Coach Weck wants to take him out of the game. A box one on Muller as they try to force it to him, and he's trapped in the corner, but they retain possession. Rossi, for shall have it. Gives it to Ben Ezra. Ben Ezra looking over his options. They're going to call a timeout. That's shall have it. So clearly Coach Coleman didn't like what he saw there. But it's a 39-39 game. Mag and David off to a good start with a clutch shot from Cohen. Yeah, Coach Dweck going back to the box one on Muller. Do not want him to keep feeding off his great third quarter. And I want to see the Shahabet Firehawks not necessarily force him the ball. Tried to give it to him on the back cut. Almost threw it away. They are a skilled team all around. Have to force the ball to the middle of this box one. Pass it to the middle, Dower and Rossi. Allow defenders to commit, kick it out to shooters, a game, Ben Ezra. Good things will happen, no need to force. 7.15 left to play here in the fourth quarter. 39-39, tie game between the Shalhevet Firehawks and the Mag and David Warriors. Noah Rossi takes the ball for Shalhevet, 7-12. It's gonna be an exciting one. There goes Ashigian, 4-3, no good, but Ben Ezra in for the rebound, no good. Here goes Dower. Muller gives it back to Rossi. Rossi driving, sends out to Ashigian, 4-3 again. Yes! Jeremy Ashigian puts the Shalhevin Firehawks back up by three with 6.45 left to play here in the fourth quarter. Here goes Nacken, he responds! That's Michael Nacken tying the game back up at 42. Noah Rossi now goes in, no good. Taken back by Mag and David. Here's Albert Nasseri, gives it back to Jajadi. And there goes Nacken, and Mag and David finds himself back up by two with 6.25 left to play. Oh my goodness, what an exciting basketball game. Michael Nacken with the response. Jeremy Ishigi in the huge corner three. Nacken says this one's not over. A big three followed by a big layup, a two point lead. Back for the Warriors, six minutes remaining in this ball game. Rossi gives it back to Muller. Muller looking over what he could be doing with this shell have offense. Sends it down to Dower. Dower goes up, no foul called. And now here goes Mag and David fast in transition. 
Teddy Cohen slows things down with 5.54 left to play here in the fourth quarter. It's a two-point lead for the Mag and David Warriors. Ray Jajadi has a little bit of a trip up there between Masset Nasseri and Muller, and they'll say Muller committed the foul. Yeah, that another foul on Muller. Has to play straight up, only his third. On the other end, Jajadi, the great straight-up defense, not fouling, preventing the two, going the other way. Magan right back on top. They will not go away. Michael Natkin, the story of this fourth period early on. Outstanding play by him. Let's see how he finishes off. A good indication for how good a game is is whether I'm standing up or not, and it's no secret I am standing up. This is a thriller here in the Tier 1 Championship. Mackin goes up. Ooh, just misses. And Noah Rossi brings it down for the Firehawks. Rossi going quick. Try and take it in, but it's taken back. Now Benezra goes up with it. They're going to call the foul. And Benezra's going to head the line for two. Looked like he was thinking of going all the way up and throwing that one down. Yeah, might not have been able to see at your angle, but Benezra way over the rim on that one. Draws the foul. Going to go to the line for two free throws. A chance to tie it up. Jacob Benezra, the junior, the transfer. Probably his biggest basketball game of his career at the line for two. Jacob Benezra. Hits his first, and it's a one-point lead. Mag and David, 44, shall have it 43 with 5.26 left to play here in the fourth quarter. Benezra misses the second, so it remains a one-point lead for the Warriors. 5.23 left to play here in the Tier 1 Championship. Teddy Cohen calling out the play for his Warriors. Yeah, Nisera going back to the line play. Four guys across the free throw line, gonna wait a couple of seconds and attack, shall have it back in their man-to-man -man defense, playing straight up, playing strong. Five fouls each way, one to give for both teams. Cohen, Nasseri was thinking three, faked and didn't do it. There goes Antibi, Antibi for three. Oh, just too hard, but Jajadi comes down with the rebound. Jajadi, 4.45 left to play here in quarter number four. Defense chance, blurting out from the Shalhebet faithful. Ben Ezra taking Teddy Cohen tight. It's now to Nagin. Jajadi, cross court, 4-3. Just short. Jajadi, though, tried sending it in, but it was off the bottom. I, they're going to say that it hit the white pole on the back of the backboard, which is an out of bounds. Yeah, but great hustle by Jajadi following his miss. The miss, first one to the ball, couldn't save it. I like the idea as, again, Cohen, shading Moeller full court, no room to breathe. The senior guard, though, going to bring it up, going to trust him. A box one back for the Warriors. Let's see how the Firehawks try to break it. Ben Ezra tried sending it to a Shagian, but it hit off of the Mag and David player, and now will be shall have at ball with 419 left to play here in this tournament. Yeah, the Firehawks going to try to break this zone, screening the outside guys, sending shooters running baseline opposite each way. Going to try to free up those guys. We saw Jeremy Ashagin hit one earlier. And if not, the slip screen will be there. Let's see how they break it right now. Reamer puts it up for three. Just short, but Dower in to clean up the mess. Puts it up, fouled, and it's good. A huge and one for the senior. Brings back the Firehawks. A one-point lead. 4.03 left in this ball game. Going to go to the line for one more free throw. Try to extend it to two. While we have a second, I want to thank... Just a couple of people, Adam Kogelman from the admissions department here at YU for coordinating a lot of this, as well as Joe Bednarsh, our dear friend, the athletic director. Dower sinks that one. It's a two-point lead again, as well as Yoni Cohen. We heard him before. Josh Joseph and everybody at YU that's helped us put on this production. I'd also like to thank Justin Safier and everybody that's come to help this Max Live team put on this production that we've had this weekend. 3.50 left to play. There's Cohen. That's no good, so it's a two-point lead for Shalhevet, and they have the ball. Zach Muller bringing it up. He's trying to propel his Firehawks to a second straight Saracek championship. Zev, Zev Reamer has the ball for the Firehawks. Nasseri tried taking that from Muller, but it's no good. Muller puts up the off-balance shot. No good, and the Mag and David Warriors have the ball. They're looking to tie or take the lead. Nasseri. Driving, puts it up, no good. No one in sight for the Warriors to grab that rebound. And Reamer instead gets the ball, bringing it up for the Firehawks. Yeah, Reamer wheeling around, 
Wisely bringing it out as Ben Ezra for the three. That's good! Jacob Ben Ezra as he strums the guitar afterwards. And Shalhevek calls the timeout. Wow. It's a 49-44 game with 2.57 left to go here in this fourth quarter. Jacob Ben Ezra, a huge three. Probably the biggest of his young career. Showing us his best, Lance Stevenson. The guitar strum right after to the crowd. Brings the Shalhevet lead up to five points. 2.57 remaining in this ball game. Shalhevet looks like they could be on their way to another championship. They're second in a row. Their fourth straight time playing in this game. Lost two in 2016, 2017. Won last year, trying to defend that title here today. Just one more person I'd like to thank, Menachem Lewin. Also a huge component to this Max Live production, so thank you to him. As I'm gonna actually take a seat for these next couple of minutes before we have to stand up again for the end of this nail biter. It's now the biggest lead of the night for Shalhevet, up by five with 2.57 left to play here in this tier one championship of the 2019 Red Sarachek tournament. We saw MTA come away with tier two. Ida Crown came away with tier three before that. So now we'll see who can come away with tier one. Nacken puts up 4-3, that's good! Falling down, Michael Nacken hits three, and it's back to a two-point lead for the Firehawks. 2.42 left to play here in the fourth quarter. Nacken, the impossible three, gets knocked down, no foul call, doesn't matter. Three points on the board, right back to a two-point game as the Firehawks try to break this defense. A 2-3 defense right now for the Mag and David Warriors. Their first time in it today, trying to give the Firehawks something new, trying to disguise what they have. Eight seconds left on the shot clock. Rossi with six on the shot clock. Going in, gets off to Muller. 4-3, no good, but taken back by Mag and David. Here goes Michael Nacken. Finds the control of it. Here goes Nasseri. Going in, no good, no foul call. That looked... A little shaky to me, but I guess in these last couple of minutes, they're not going to call it. So two minutes left to play. Great. It's a Shalhevet 49-47 to lead. Muller has the ball for Shalhevet. Great straight-up defense by Rossi on the other end. Not throwing his hands down, not using the body. Play straight up. Good things will happen. Forces the miss as Shalhevet tries to extend this lead. Just 140 remaining. Dower gives it back to Rossi. Shot clock winding down. Here goes Dower. 4-3. Yes! You can give that to Asher Dower. 1.30 left to play. Timeout called. It's a five-point lead for the Shalhevet Firehawks as they look to secure their second straight Saracek championship. Wow. A huge three-pointer. Can't say I didn't teach him that one in the backyard. Dower, the big three. 131 remaining. Coach Coleman talking to his guys with the timeout. This crowd is fired up. Answers Nackin's big one, back to a five-point game. Really excited to see how this one plays out. David, what are your thoughts? Who's coming away with the victory? My thoughts are like this. Shalhevet came into this tournament as a clear favorite, and this is just really exciting to see a team like Mag and David, who lost the Yeshiva League Championship just two weeks ago, come out thunderously in this game and really keep this one within, reach, within, within reaching distance of potentially pulling off the upset over Shalhevet. So this is just really exciting for me, and just want to again thank everybody that's been involved with this production. I, I can't thank everybody enough. I want to thank my color guy yesterday, uh, who I know is listening in class right now, so I hope Rabbi Berman's not listening, but Sam Eisenstatter, who called the game with me yesterday. That's just what Saracek is. You want to watch even when you're in class, so he's somehow pulling that off, but a shout-out to him. A shout-out to Yoshua Siegel, who called games with you. Of course. And just everybody that's worked for us over the course of this tournament. We're just looking forward to next year, where we're going to come back stronger than ever. We have a lot of guys coming back for the regular season. Sadly, Natan Seredny, who is on my right, will not be coming back. But 1.30 left to play, and Shalhevet and Mag and David. It's a five-point lead for Shalhevet. Yeah, and before it's too late, he's not going to give himself a shout-out. But to my right, David Schwartzman, the president of the Max Live staff. This would all not be possible if not for him. A huge shout-out to him, calling the big games, putting on the production for the others. Great job as Mag and David, down five, going to let the ball roll, trying to cut back into this deficit. Cohen gives it to Nacken. Nacken's seen a lot of action and get, had a lot of production. Here goes Antibi. Puts up the shot. That's good! Antibi, number 13, icing his veins. Right back, no more than 10 seconds off the board. 
back to a three-point game. Antibi and Nakian, big shot after big shot. So it's a three-point lead now for Shalhevet. We're about to enter the final minute of this game. Asher Dower sends it over to Ashagian. 17 on the shot clock. Reamer has it now with under a minute left to go. Asher Dower puts it up. No good. And they're going to say it's Mag and David ball. Loose ball foul on the Firehawks will lead to a Mag and David possession with 51.8 left to go in this contest. Yeah, a loose ball foul. Only the sixth team foul on the Shaw Havet Firehawks. Not in the bonus just yet. We spoke about it, had four going into this period. Played straight up defense for much of this quarter. Only one foul before then. Gonna lead to an inbounds by Mag and David. Down three, 51.8 on the clock. 35 seconds on the shot clock. Want to see how they play this out. I am sure Coach Dweck will try to get the two, two for one. Try to shoot it within the first 10 seconds. Score and then probably play straight up defense. If not, a quick foul, try to get the steal. Maybe Santa shall have it to the line. Curious to see what Coach Dweck comes out with at, right after this timeout. Not quite the tier one championship that we saw last year. That one was a little, more, a little bit more distance, I, be, I believe, between the two teams. But now, shall have it with a three point lead with 51.8 left to go in this contest, then you can't ask for much more in the Saracek Championship game. No, you cannot. Both teams exchanging punches, exchanging blows, a heavyweight fight out here, to use the analogy. Both teams on fire, not as much of a defensive battle as we saw early in this game. Prolific shooting by both teams. This one is exciting. I expect the Warriors to go back to one of their two hot hands and to be or Nakin, the sharpshooters, but wouldn't be surprised if they give it to arguably their most reliable player, number 23, Albert Nasseri. Relentless going to the rim. They have a lot of weapons they could use right here. 50 seconds left to go in this contest. Michael Nakin, who shall have it. Coach Coleman told them they have to shut down. That's what's most important. Here goes Cohen. Fake. Nakin, 4 3. Oh, it's just too, too far to the right. And now, Shalhevet has the ball with 30 seconds left to go, and they'll foul. And will send Muller to the line with 30.9 seconds left to go in this contest. Yeah, Nakin cannot find the bottom with the triple. They foul Muller, a 76% foul shooter on the year. Going to the line, he's been in big games throughout his career. Not many free throws more important than these, though. One and one, up three trying to ice the game and send shall have it home with their second straight Saracek trophy. Zach Muller. Just misses it. And now Megan David gets the ball back and calls a timeout. So this one is just coming down to the wire. People are excited and on their feet. But Coach Ike Dweck wants to talk things over with his Warriors team. 27.4 left to go three-point lead for the Shell Havet Firehawks. That ball probably hit each and every part of the rim at least two or three times before rolling out. Zach Muller cannot believe it, but Coach Coleman's going to talk to his guys, probably tell his guys to play straight up. The last thing you want to do is send this Warriors team to the line with a chance to score with the clock stopped. Coach Dweck wouldn't be surprised if he tries to get a quick two and then foul. But if more than 15 seconds go off this clock, would expect a three to come up. A lot of different moving parts right now. Back to a game of chess between both coaches. Really curious to see how this one plays out. Coach Dweck and Coach Coleman, both pleasures to talk to. Very nice guys. And we appreciate giving us the time of day to discuss what has to be known about their squads. Yeah, Coach Dweck and Coach Coleman, two of the biggest personalities in this tournament. Great guys, both players in their own right. Great coaches leading their teams to two great seasons. No better way than to have these guys match off in the Saracek Championship. Both fan bases out here. We have the Mag and David Warriors crowd now alive, waving those terrible towels, the yellow ones, up in the air. Shall have it, wanting to fly home today with a trophy. This one is going down to the wire. 27.4 left to go. Three point lead. Mag and David with the ball. They're down, but Muller takes it away. He's got a clear path to the basket. And he misses. 
but he gets his own rebound. Here goes Muller now, 14 seconds left to go, shot clock is off, and they have to foul him. What a sequence there, Muller misses the shot, gets his own rebound, but Shalhevet finds themselves still up by three with 11.5 left to go here in this game. And this game is far from over, but Coach Dweck cannot be happy. His hustle players, the Mag and David Warriors, we talk about the relentless effort, not following Muller down the court, had an opportunity to maybe grab a rebound, but a four on one advantage on the offensive glass. Shall have it, will retain that each and every time. Coach Coleman, maybe sarcastically, bumping Zach Muller, his star player, doesn't matter, gonna go to the line with another opportunity to ice this game. Couldn't convert just 30 seconds ago, but a chance to redeem himself at the line and maybe send Shall have it home as Sarachek champions. 52-49, Shalhevet looks to make it two straight. Here at the Max Stern Athletic Center. What a tournament it's been. Yeah, a great tournament. We saw MTA, the host of this tournament, Yeshiva University High School, winning the Tier 2 championship just a couple moments ago. And before then, Ida Crown, the Ida Crown Aces from Chicago, winning the Tier 3 championship earlier today and we are just 11.5 seconds away from crowning our tier one Sarachek champions and an MVP as well with some more awards that will be brought to you after this one. Here goes Muller, he's gonna try to put this one away for the Warriors. Sinks it. And it's up to a four point lead for the Shalhevet Firehawks. 11.5 seconds left to go in this contest. Zach Muller, ice in his veins. Cannot expect him to miss two in a row on the biggest of stages. A chance right now to extend it to five, but he, he misses. cannot. So here go the Warriors, 10 seconds left to play. Nacken throws it up. Oh, and almost was able to bank it in. But here we go. This shall have, ooh, and fouled right before I even prematurely almost said that they were champions, but there's .9 seconds in between the Firehawks and their second straight championship. Yeah, but this one is all but over. The Firehawks out four, just 0 0.9 on the clock. They are one second away from taking home their second straight trophy, and the crowd loves it. Shall have it, the Firehawks becoming somewhat of a dynasty here at the Sarachek tournament. Four straight, five in eight years, excuse me, five in seven years, just two misses in the past seven years for this Firehawks team. They dominate this, the Sarachek tournament and they are looking to add to their collection tonight. These fans are ready to storm the court. Reamer hits it. So it's now a five point lead for the Firehawks. Reamer hits the second. Inbounded by Mag and David. Nacken's gonna wait to touch it. As he almost throws down, but to no avail. The Shalhevin Firehawks are your 2019 Red Sergeant Basketball Tournament Champions. Yeah, a great effort by both teams. Let's start with the Mag and David Warriors, a valiant effort. I don't think many expected them to pull this one out, but they gave it their all. Up six at the break, almost coming away with a win, but the Shalhevet Firehawks too hot, too strong, too big, too skilled down the stretch, coming back, down six at the half, went up by three, after the end of this third period, and they held on to win the Sarachek Championship. We'll be back with an interview in a couple minutes. Do not go away.
we are for tonight. Sorry, man. One minute, one minute. Oh, sit down, sit down. Well. No, but like, you got it. Yeah, you got it. Very You got it. You got it. Why don't you guys have a um, Bring it up a little bit. You guys are doing well. That's Hello? Oh, that's a lot of guys. Yo, yeah, so in the microphone. Yeah, I can hear you. You're good. What? If you want. Uh, if you I'm want. gonna ask Muller the first question. Yeah, if you want, ask him if you want. Ask if you want. Tell me if you want. Four. Way too much fanfare here. Welcome back to Max Live post game show. I'm here with the champion, the 2019 Saracic champion, yes, shot at Firehawks, Zach Muller, captain of the team. How does this feel to win your second straight championship? It feels amazing, especially to win it with these guys. I've been playing with them since I was little. It's just amazing to win again and feel, uh, feel, knows what it, know what it feels like to be on top again. All right, guys. Know you guys all well. Have to say you're continuing the legacy as your predecessors did earlier. Yes, sir. Fourth straight championship appearance. Five in seven years. How does it feel to continue this Firehawks legacy, getting two in a row and adding to the Shaw Havoc collection? It feels great to be making history and being part of it, being the first school to go back to back in Saratech history. It feels amazing. That is. Guys, That's guys, to win back to back. You were clear favorites coming into here, but what was, how tough was, was this Mag and David team, and, and what was it like to finally pull away at the end there? Um, Mag and David was definitely scrappy. They were a very good team. And we knew we, this was our destiny to play them from the beginning of the year. So we want, we knew this would be a fun game and a close one. Coach, and it was. One coach, more question. We're going to get Coach Coleman. Coach, it's a final word. Give us a message to your team. A message to the fans back home. What do you have to say, Coach? A message to your team. A message to the fans back home. What do you have to say after the victory? Oh, that's a lot of pressure. You know, I don't like talking in front of people, but couldn't be happier. Look at this group of people that came out to support us. And, uh, you know, we're... we're, we're no better bath than that one, baby. No better bath than that one. You guys run a great tournament. Thanks for having us. Hope to see everybody out in LA soon. Thank you so much for tuning in to Max Live. I'm David Schwartzman, Jacob Dower, sending off. We'll see you next year, and we'll see you very soon. <laughs>